How how are you both? I'm you pre coffee. Ah. Hmm. So I'm I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I got it here. I had a very, yeah, I had to have yeah. a very slow start today because I've I've been working a lot in the last couple of days. How about you, Gary? Well, well, just on that topic, I've often thought about you know our discussions are basically between uh, yourselves as sort of you know just or mid morning and myself as sort of evening. And that sort of mindset, you know, the morning evening mindset is, I think, a little bit different. I just wonder what would happen if it was reversed and uh, what sort of, because uh, you know, I think differently in the morning than I do in the evening. Um, well, I think I think differently. Uh, I, I, I may not. Uh, but, you know, I've often thought that. But how am I? I, I I'm really not sure. When we meet up next, <laughs> in reality, uh, mm -hmm. we won't know you. I won't know you because <laughs> you well, will be a different will be a, person. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, every quantum moment is a, is a different me. Oh, I, mean, good. <laughs> I fell into that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, I like you in the morning, Gary. I, I always liked you all times of the day. <laughs> and you're thinking. Oh, that that oh, thinking is good. I like the morning thinking. Oh, <laughs> As well. For me, maybe it's better to meet up in the morning. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always pretty wiped out by, by this time. And, well, you know, we, I start work at you know five or six o'clock. Um, just go through continuous. Uh, so by the end, of, I'm sort of getting towards the you know I'm winding down, wasting time watching YouTube videos and trying to pay attention to things. Uh, so yeah, all my work is done in the morning. It's really you know, if it doesn't get done in the morning, it's just not going to get done at all. Do you remember that the, back in the olden days, uh, well, it must have been about the, in the 70s, there was, this, there was a whole lot of books came out, these self-improvement books on what they called biorhythms. Do you remember biorhythms? Oh, indeed. I, mean, I, think, I don't think it's course. gone away. I mean, I think they still... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, well the biorhythms, as per these books, was complete utter garbage. Uh, uh, you can, that, that doesn't... But, the, but anyway, but the thing is, that, um, the thing is, in those days, you couldn't actually cross check it. You could, uh, all you had was a bookshop and, and maybe if you're lucky, a library. So, you know, picking up a book anyway, there was really no way of cross checking or saying, you know, what the hell is this? So I'll just Google that. Um, you know, the, you just had to accept that uh, what was in that book was, you know, in some way true. And of course, you know, bio, those were, were complete. As described in that those books in those days, was complete utter, utter garbage. <laughs> Were we happier then? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure this is true. <laughs> because well, that I mean, I, I, are garbage. <laughs> well, no, I'm sure they're garbage. Oh, as they were talked about then. I'm just, I'm just thinking about books because didn't you tend to look for references in books so that if they were, you know, if they were, if they were references to other books, you could sort of think that they had some, some level of authority. And if they were just bits of fiction, you know, obviously, then they wouldn't be be able to reference anything else. So I, I, I because now even now, when you, I mean, Google is it's, trusting Google as a as an authority is a bit dubious, isn't it? Is that well? It's you're casting a wide net, and you, and you're getting a consensus of a, a consensus of opinion, and you may have some you know known authoritative sources. You may have some you know unknown sources, you know, or or it's just or I think them. it's just that now it's maybe slightly easier to find them because. You you know you can as you say you can use a computer tool whereas you could always have looked up any references or just I mean after a while you get to know references don't you just I mean, if if 
who's being cited and as mm. to whether they've got I, mean, I remember I remember reading things like Chariot of the Gods. Do you remember that? Von Daniken? Yeah. yeah. And thinking this just isn't right. This just mm-hmm. and, and having big debates with people, you know, and thinking yeah. they were telling me, Oh yeah, this is as it is. And uh you thought, well, you know, where's the evidence for this? You know, and so mm-hmm. I think and I'm not sure, I mean, even now, you've got people like Trump who are presenting information to, and apparently sort of almost half America believes him, even though you can Google it and find that it's not true. So I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think, I'm not sure that there is, that Google has helped much in... in... Well, it would have helped people like me. Yeah, uh, well, it, it, would, like it, it would have said, you know, what's this all about? There's really no other cross-reference um, and I mean, I, I, well, in my case, I mean, I was just a, a high school dropout and uh, I, I wouldn't have known all that much about you know, references. So, and, you know, I wouldn't have probably, have, yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, so, you know, I, w- I would have been just thinking as, as a, you know, some young lad looking at these books, not seeing any other, other book mentioning those sorts of concepts and uh, not, not criticizing that, you know, that there was just, no way of finding criticism of, of anything that you might have picked up, picked up on, on a bookshelf. I'm not, no, not, not just, you know, biorhythm specifically or, or, you know, chariots of the gods specifically, but, but you know, just books in general, you just had to take their word uh, that, that what they what were saying was, was, was true. Mm. Um, yeah, any, I'd any, actually... Any, any references. Any that's references quite, they might that's have quite a good you know. thing, though, isn't it? Isn't that a good thing to be able to, you know, means you have to rely on your own processing of it you have to think about these things and you have to look and say well is this what how do how am i going to find out whether this is true what level of belief should i oh, yes, but you've got the privilege of of the book in those days i mean getting published was was a big deal and and uh, you know the, the book had authority yeah. of some sort you know, yeah. so, so there was that elevation that you know there's no way that anybody could afford to self-publish that was out of the question and so any, any publisher publishing something, you would think sort of had some sort of, you know, um, uh, control or some sort of filtering going on. So I that, mean, that, publishers that, still that, publish that, rubbish now. It's, uh, oh, it's, of course. It's, I'm it's not saying they, they don't. But, but the actual status of the book, you know, it has, you know, uh, it was certainly you know, going back a few decades, had a, a much more hallowed, uh, uh, you know, authority. Uh, than it, than it might do now. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I would about ten, maybe maybe longer years ago. I had a an email debate with my eldest brother, who's a who's quite a lot like me, in that he sort of looks like me. We have a similar career path, but he's uh, much more of a committed, well. Say much more. He is he's a committed sort of I don't know about Christian, but he certainly believes in in a in a higher being um to an extent. And so we had this online because yeah, we had email then, so we were, were online email debate about um God. And I was just saying, well, it's and it actually it, it was quite good because it made me spend a lot of time thinking about argument and thinking about evidence. And thinking about um, how you could definitively um, prove something one way or the other, so you're sort of looking at the nature of of what it is to have a rational proof. Anyway, long story is that a short story is that I asked, I said, well, there's a lot seems to be lots of books because it was at the time of the God Delusion by Richard Dawkins mm-hmm. and. Um, and so I said, well, I've read that. And, you know, you can see that quite clearly it's, it's, it's an illusion, a delusion. And he, he read it and he didn't really didn't like it. it was, yeah. But I said, well, look, there's, there's quite a lot of books like that around, sort of, sort of debunking the God. He said, give me one that, that isn't. Give me a, you know, a, a book, a published book that gives the opposite point of view. And it, it took a while, but he found one called um, Why Us? I can't remember the author, but it was a an authoritative author. The author, half the book was about uh, genetics. So he was a geneticist 
and I couldn't understand the genetics. I, I just got lost. But he had his argument was that that there must be a higher authority because of something that happened to Homo sapiens uh, about three three hundred and fifty thousand years ago when there was a when there was an explosion of creativity, and that 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 was one of the proofs. There were a number of other proofs um, that there must have been divine intervention in in evolution. So there was a book there which presumably had some references to other things, probably mainly genetic things. Um, but it was the reading of the book that you you sort of had, then had to look into to find where the arguments fell down, and because they were they were presented by somebody who was very committed and very who who believed something very much. And that was, you know, it was, it, there weren't many other books <laughs> following the same pattern that I've sort of, that I've come across. But this was a scientist writing a book um, and suggesting that this, so, so there was a sort of, as you say, a level of authority associated with it. Um, but I, it's, it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting point about what we should accept I'm just less convinced, I suppose, that, that, that Google helps that much. It doesn't, because it, if you believe something, if you accept something, it's, not, it's going to take more than a book to sort of change your mind, isn't it? Well, you know, the question is, do you, is there any point in try, trying to change somebody's mind? I mean, I think you, you've got to think in terms of people as being sort of you know, sane in this regard. But, but uh, thinking in terms of people having different levels of uh, wanting to know reality. Uh, you know, uh, pe perhaps people just find it's, it's most comfortable to, to cling to a, a non-reality uh, as some sort of, you know, a consolation, some sort of um, thing that will get them through life. Um, I just wonder whether it's a, whether it's as, what I'm saying, deep, significant, is whether that's a question at all. I mean, if you think of Donald Trump's supporters and Donald Trump himself, it it appears that he believes what he's saying. He believes that the election has been stolen from him by a corruption. I don't think now that he's using this as an excuse. I think he actually believes it appears as though this is this is what he thinks is the truth. And there are a lot of other people who now, because they're like him, also think that this is the truth. This is as it is. This is reality. So if you present another reality, that isn't reality. And it's well, a difficult... Well, you know... Uh, holding on to God is, that, is the same as sort of holding on to non-realities. Well, it is to uh, to you and maybe to me, but it's it's not if you're if you're what, if you believe it, people... then it's not not real. It's not it's it's not you because the position that you're in it's is not one of this is non-reality. This is reality. If I believe in God that much, then it that is the way things are. But people want to filter their their, uh, their examination through the those the filters of those beliefs now, it has to fit in if it doesn't fit in then it must be false yeah it, it, it i suppose what i'm thinking is that from a, from a it's not a starting point of um i'm believing this and no i'm not i'm believing this because i don't accept what you're saying I believe this because this is the truth. So the whatever truth. anybody else says is wrong. Oh. Isn't that the case? It's no, like you, you, no, you're, no, not, no. you're not saying, well, well, the truth is that there is no God, but I happen to believe in God, so I want my rea reality. That's not the point. The point is, no. this is the truth. The truth is there is a God. Anybody else's belief is wrong. Anybody else's truth is wrong. 
Well, we know that, that they're idiots, of course. <laughs> we, we, we know. Yes. Uh, look, that's we not the argument. There is, there, there is no God. <laughs> Say uh, what you, you really know, mean. We are, we, we, are clearly, <laughs> we are clearly superior to them because we are right and they are wrong. Uh, well, here's an interesting one. I was thinking about this this week, and uh, I, I, I came across again Howard Gardner's um, eight, and I think he, he now tours eight and a half or maybe even nine intelligences. Are you familiar with Howard Gardner? The, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, he, yeah. and I read it first, I think, when it first came out or soon after, and I was sort of fascinated because I was in education at the time, so it was a, quite interesting. And having and coming across it again, rereading it, and nothing's changed much. Um, and I, I really like his perspective because he hasn't engaged with developing the idea. He said, it's not, I'm not a specialist in these other areas. So it's not really up to me to develop it as an educationist or whatever. Um, it's, it's the idea. And, and if people can make use of the idea, then that's, that's interesting, but it's up to them to do it, not to me. So he hasn't actively tried to take it any further and just let it see what, what grounding there is for it through a sort of its own evolution. But so I, I sort of have had a quite deal of respect for him for, for that. So he's not sort of just using it as a money pot. And, but one of the things was looking through the intelligences, there are a couple of them. I see if I can remember now one to do with physical, um, mot your, your ability to be able to move through space, like a dancer or a, a, a cricketer, because we talk about cricket or a footballer or a, um, yoga teacher, say somebody who is who is very um, intelligent in terms of their bodily movement and the way that they can uh, move through space. And another one was spatial awareness, uh, being able to understand and relate immediately to the world around you. Now, I'm not. I I've, I've was thinking of myself and and thinking, well, actually, I'm I'm quite good at being able to manipulate sculpture sculptural things I, and I can do it with my hands I can make things and I can understand three-dimensional form so I've got those sort of I, I would say on this scale I've got the intelligences in those areas now I, I'd like to think that I'm quite I'm, I'm okay in terms of sort of rational intelligence as well which is one of the other of the eight intelligences but I can think of lots of people who would be good in the similar way to myself in terms of the uh, being able to manipulate the world around you and understand it and have those skills and have those intelligences but not have a rational understanding not have a, a rational intelligence so you can have fr from his perspective from this perspective intelligences in different ways and i just thought thinking about this conversation and i sort of with you most of the time I certainly sort of have been you know thinking about well these 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 people are just not bright but it's not bright or intelligent it really isn't isn't the case it's really about the ability to be able to think rationally and that's a sort of a niche area really it's not it's and it's not maybe it's maybe less useful to think about it as a a be all and end all of what's useful in terms of what we call intelligence. You know, the... I, I really don't think it has anything to do with intelligence. If I look ah, at my own right. thing, I just, I propose that, you know, I make it up as I go along, right? So I come from beyond the stakes, right? Uh, and I was bright enough to go to grammar school and um, and then I learned to le to learn facts. My only way out was uh, sciences because I didn't learn how to think there because no one that taught there really, I don't know, there might be one person that I can remember who actually knew how to think. Everyone else was just really pedestrian about, you know, intelligent enough, but not thinking as I now think of thinking. So I didn't learn how to think. I just learned how to be good at, at sciences. It took me ages to learn how to think. But what was 
there. I'm 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 not sure I have yet, but I'm 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 at it. <laughs> uh, you know, I I notice. You know, there's Ruben, Rupert. When you say, "Oh no, we had it all there," that you were grew, you you were in an in an educational environment, in an ac academic environment, and I just wasn't. And that there weren't there weren't the reference books. I didn't. I'm with Gary. I didn't have them. You know, I couldn't look a reference up. I wouldn't have known where to go. Uh, there were a few bad novels, um, maybe also some good ones, and science books, and that was my lot you know and and I couldn't really follow something like like Buddhism or whatever I was interested in very well so for me Google is a is, is a absolute uh, advantage there because I wasn't in an environment where I could have access to these other things very easily and then I went to a university city which completely is very famous but it is famous for medicine it doesn't do thinking again you know it doesn't it just does facts in in the way that they are believed in and anyway I think what was there from the beginning, though, and it set me apart, I know, because it got me into trouble so often, was a fundamental element of doubt. Doubt. And being able, and, and therefore, be, um, having uh, the challenge and um, building up an ability to live with uncertainty. So you, you and and that is the crucial thing, not intelligence. Intelligence can be deployed on anything that you might want to, even in believing in angels. Um, but but the, what I think makes that, that discerning thinking happen, that then we might call rational or, or intelligent, is an element of doubt and not knowing yet, so that you can actually have something to pursue. So there's a question that you can hold for a while. And that doubt didn't come from my education. It came from my parents. You know, my mother, a devout Catholic, and my father, an atheist. And they wouldn't discuss that much, but it was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they knew better than to go on that uh, area because I don't know, they would have, they would have just been. But you know, just her, um, you know, running into church every day, and my father, uh, you know, really changing his way not to have to walk past it. Um, that gave me, I think, a very personal uh, orientation towards doubt, towards not knowing, and that there's something to explore there. And I, I propose to you just at the moment that that is what might differentiate uh, very broadly uh, this different outlook of life, you know, that perfectly intelligent people would follow Trump because uh, it's just something to believe in and the belief is is something that's not messed with because they might have grown up uh, in an environment where that was so and where you could just be believing one thing and it was never never questioned in that way or that you get people who for some reason have picked up that element of doubt as well and therefore are seekers for the rest of their lives over to you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a good it's very interesting, um, and I'm not sure where it fits in with the sort of the, this this Howard Gardner um, approach of different intelligences. Um, maybe it's a quality that's outside all of that the the idea of doubt and questioning. And maybe it's it's just something that could apply to all of them. So if you wanted to be a dancer, you could you could be a dancer doing other people's dances and never want to move on from that. Perhaps be in the chorus or something, and you, or you could want to be the the ballerina, the star ballerina. You want to create new dances and you want to question and say why is this the way to do it? And I want to do something else. So it, it might be something that applies throughout yeah. so it might well be that that's a distinguishing feature uh, 
I just but, notice in my the people I work with that this ability to hold an uncertainty is very unevenly distributed. Yeah. You know, this is just like some people cannot hold that for one second. They, it, it just completely destabilizes them and and they can't have it. And then there's, and you have to almost, you, know, you have to stabilize yourself. You have to follow something and follow it 100% perhaps um, and not doubt it anymore. And it has nothing to do with it, 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 perfectly intelligent people can, can execute that to the T. And then there is others who have, who can live like that, who can, who can say, I don't know yet. Maybe I will never know. That's fine, you know. I just kind of put the next step forward, um, and and hold that to s such. And in our, our course, maybe there were also differences of ability to hold doubt, and to to live with that, and and to you know it was a high level of of this uncertainty in the group, which made it so dynamic. Because you know, so we could explore all kinds of things. So I, I consider that, um, and then it didn't stick. Lots of it, but but, but at least one can l at least listen to another opinion without a completely feeling this destabilization um, that that I guess maybe a lot of people have who follow a strong faith, if it's in Trump or God or. Um, um, uh, I don't know, uh, Martians. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think that's interesting. I'm not sure that it's much, in a way, though, much different than Gary's point about intelligence. You know, these people are not very bright. These people are. These people are prepared to hold doubt. These people are not. It, it's a sort of still. It's a still a bell curve. It's just you've given the bell curve a different name. Um, that, you, that we can, you know, we, we've got up here at this end for the bell curve. Depends on which way it is. These people are absolutely can hold doubt. They can. In the middle, we've got the majority of people who have some level of it, and at the bottom here, we've got people who are no are completely incapable of of holding on to doubt or questioning and accepting. And in, in the same way, you can have the same bell curve for intelligence, for what we were calling intelligence. So it, it it's it's categorizing, but in a different, using a different label. Um, yeah. Um, I suppose the difference is that there's a sort of sense that there's a genetic level of intelligence if we're just talking about rational and the ability to be able to think of things rationally, that that cannot be shifted a great deal. You can't change people's ability to be able to rationalize much. You can change it a bit, but you can't make somebody who hasn't got that ability at the moment into somebody who's very capable. You can shift them a little bit along the line. Can you change somebody who has a fixed, non-doubting perspective on the world to being somebody who is accepting of doubt easily and or not easily, but but fundamentally? Can they be shifted? So is is it not the case of one is a fairly fixed curve and one is much more fluid depending on life experiences? Would everybody who had had your life experience of having parents with different opinions on the nature of a of an ultimate being um, be a, somebody who doubts, or is that something to do with you? I think it was an early conditioning, and, and is crucial. I'm, I'm very glad for it because hmm, but would it, have, it makes would it that be, effortless. You know, think but, of somebody you know now who who is very fixed in their opinions and would not doubt things. I don't think it cannot not change. Not my experience, but my God, is it? It's, it's a slog, and like any new skill, I think it's a. It, but it, I'm not. I, I, I'm sure it's not something that cannot be. Um, 
Well, learned is, is a difficult thing. Uh, that it can come into someone's world better. That someone can learn in, in mindfulness for example, the major things I would say that one learns how to hold uh, in, in uncertainty easier. Yeah, that, that one gets a resilience. And, and I guess resilience has a lot to do with it. So these are all kind of words that, that swing around is the, what I think the basic skill is to, to tolerate uncertainty. That's really interesting because I think, uh, I think there's a it's, it's this is a lot of validity in what you're saying and uh and it, it's very hopeful in a way that if that's the case because it means that things can shift from the polarization that we're currently experiencing or apparently i'm not completely convinced about the political polarization ideas but it does it, it sort of it's a very hopeful perspective isn't it that you sort of suggest well it, 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 if it's if it's not ingrained if it's not genetic then it is possible to shift lots of people to a position where they're more questioning and less prepared to accept um, faith on on its without questioning I mean, I suppose from a historical perspective, that's where we are now, isn't it? I mean, if you look, it wasn't that long ago that everybody believed in God, pretty much. Mm. And yet now, probably less than half of people in Western Europe do. And why is that? Whereas in Indonesia, or my, from when I was there a long time ago, you it was it had to be written on your passport which god you believed in so you know you you are there and the influence what well, is that the influence of the enlightenment um or just general philosophical engagement with rational argument in the west no, this is getting a bit too. It's getting a bit hard this morning. <laughs> well, we got the expert, Gary. Come on. <laughs> um, well, I guess what part of the qu the question? I mean, I'm a bit lost. Yeah. Well, okay. The question is then: If is would it be possible within a, a fairly short time to change the nature of people in Indonesia's acceptance of a higher being through something, through some educational program within, let's no. say, within two generations. Uh, no, no, that could, that could not happen. Um, I mean, well, within a, a within uh, hundred years, it's, maybe. Um, I think it's, the thing is with religion in countries like Indonesia is that. Religion is just, you know, the great fear. Everybody has it. And everybody sort of just, it's just there. It, it, it's not something that's allowed to be questioned. So you just don't question. And for the most part, you don't really care about it. Um, even for, so, you know, but, you know, people can be changed uh, through, you know, but, but you know, it, it's, it, it needs narratives that actually support it's not a matter of just changing people. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not all that convinced that you can really change people dramatically. Um, I'm sort of you know, more of the opinion you can just, at, at best, you know, get rid of some of the, the sharp edges. Uh, so, well, uh, yeah, but I'm talking uh, about over over time. If because if 18th century Europe, 19th century Europe was 95, 99% Christian. Everybody's a believer. Today, 100 and odd years later, it, it isn't. It's, what well, maybe less than 50% believers. So it, over a relatively short period of time, 
the same people have changed to become you would think i don't know what and is that more rational is that more doubting it's certainly less fearful so why wouldn't that be the case somewhere else and what is it that's made that change well i think in the case of countries like like uh indonesia it's, it's really the only way that you, that you can control um, an uncontrollable population uh, i mean this is the the fourth largest country in the world by population uh, it, it's you know well it's predominantly um, muslim but you know the, the the levels of adherence is extremely varied you know probably about Half the people call themselves Muslims do lots of things which are probably very un-Muslim, uh, but but they still can. If you ask them, "Are you a Muslim?" they will say, "Yes, I am," even though I'm having my my bacon and eggs and beer. Uh, <laughs> of course, of course, I'm a Muslim, uh, and don't you say bad things about Muhammad, you know, <laughs> as they tuck back into their bacon. <laughs> so, you know, it's a question of identity and being part of the narrative that. And so, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, criticizing religion. It's just a matter of stepping outside the narrative, the, the story of that particular culture uh, that they, they happen to be embedded in. So you've got to change those narratives. And that, that, that's, uh, that's, you know, multi-generational. Uh, it, it's, it's, and it's just not a matter of changing individuals. It's a matter of changing groups and uh, group narratives. That comes back to this question of, intelligence it's, it's not the case that they're not bright it's the case of something else yes that they're fitting things you know that they're, they're taking square blocks and fitting them into their their round holes and they can do that because they're clever uh you know that that's what all clever people do it's you know we we have a, a set of frameworks. Um, you know, we impose those frameworks on, on what we perceive, and they are filtered through through those uh, those lenses uh, or those, those you know, filters, and, and so they come back to us fully formed and and you know, with all all the rough edges you know uh, sanded down, you know, any, any sort of jagged bits sort of just you know cut off with some sort of I don't know you know you basically accommodate. Uh, you know, the, the dis discordance in, in whatever you might be perceiving to, 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 to try and fit into what you, what you believe to be the right or, or correct frameworks for, for that. So, the, but going back to the original point about being, whether this has got anything, you know, whether the belief in God or the belief in Trump has got anything to do with intelligence, from what you're saying, it suggests that that isn't the case. In fact, it's not. It's not intelligence. It's it's a some. It's more of a cultural, ingrained. Mm -hmm. I don't it's know. It's a narrative. You know, they've they've narrative. adopted a narrative. They've adopted a right. culture. I mean, for instance, you know, people talk about religions in terms of belief, uh, but, but now I think it, it's as much more as as the adopt. The adoption of, of an identity. Uh, you know, the, the identity is often far more important than the beliefs. So, you know, and, and that's, you know, you get a lot of that sort of thing in, uh, you know, Western Buddhism and Western Orient, uh, Orientalism. Uh, you know, that, that's the, 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 the Buddhist or whatever it is, identity, you know, sort of surpasses that of all, all the actual beliefs. So you get all these Western Buddhists who claim they are Buddhists, but you know, don't really know a lot about it, uh, or, or, or they have sort of a very rigid sort of uh, doctrinaire uh, sort of um, perspective. So, yeah, I mean, people hold on to these things. You know, I guess it, 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 it could be called some sort of progression. And hopefully people just don't stay at those levels of frameworks, but sort of, you know, rather than sort of uh, always, um, what is it? Um, trying to have insights, you know, a, a lot, lot more people should be trying to get outsights, basically, you know, scoping out a bit sometimes, because, you know, the, the, a, a lot of uh, men, men, men courses, the very name course, basically, you know, often infers, 
you know, a focus. Uh, you know, we're going to sort of get, go 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 really deep and look straight into trying to get you know lots and lots of insights from this framework. Uh, but you know, I think far too many times we don't sort of upscope and sort of you know broaden the uh, the field of view. Uh, because once we do that, all sorts of complications and, and strange things could happen, of course. And that, that's very much what Elfie is saying about doubt, isn't it? Is that, that sort of, hmm. it's the, op, the, the course, which is one of the things that actually is, concerns me a little bit about our next course, <laughs> is that it's a... Well, yes, yeah, so, I mean, well, the thing is that, you know, body college is, is, is not geared for, for discourse. Uh, it's geared for for broadcast. Uh, it, you know, they they run yeah. courses. This is what they this is what they know to do. They they do it well. Uh, you know, they they uh, make some money to sort of you know keep them all going and keep the college going. You know, so you know this is a trusted model. Uh, and so you know, uh, but but you know the the problem is that you know it wants to get it sort of. Focusing rather than, uh, you know, of course, you know, we need to focus and sort of, you know, try and get insights and look in, look into things, you know, in a in a, a detailed way sometimes. But once you've done that, you've always got the outscope, you know, to get outsights rather than just insights and uh, uh, and you know. So, but yeah, that, that is, I think, you know. The, the fundamental problem with with body college not that it's doing anything wrong everything it's doing is correct for, for what it is, it is set up to do which is to broadcast not not and uh, not so much to discourse um, i mean of course i mean you could say well well the process process of discourse is inherent within the courses and you know to a certain extent that's that's true uh, but you know the, there's no sort of outgrowth of that discourse and it's all internalized uh it's all Private, sort of walled off, uh, and it, and it's not engaged uh, with with anything outside of that uh, that that small walled course. Yeah, I'm. I'm you've articulated what my my inarticulate thinking has been. <laughs> my, my my slight worry about about. I mean, and the the fact that it's sort of beyond Buddhism as well. It, it it's it's sort of almost suggesting that Buddhism is this as a starting point, sort of again. And I, I'm mm. I'm sort of oh. less less secure um, about that. But I suppose no, you've got to start think... somewhere. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we've just got to, to accept the limitations of, of body college you know, and, you know, what it can do and what it, what it can do well. Uh, I guess one of the, the challenges is, you know, how do you, how do you interface with that, you know, broadcast type of um, uh, discourse and, and try to engage with it uh, in, in terms of outside groups? Um, and so, you know, and... I don't know how you do that. The technicalities of that, and, you know, those sorts of things can be arranged. But, but, but you know, that's really where the worth is. If, if it's just going to be broadcast, 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 that's not going to go anywhere. That doesn't. That does not scale, uh, and that you know, uh, that that does you know, not really sort of you know expand the discourse on. On Dharma, yeah. what is Dharma? Dharmic wisdom, Dharmic practice. What is it? How many people do it? You know, of course, once, once you outscope things a little bit, you find out you, you, you see Dharma everywhere, uh, not just in Buddhism. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, you know, and, and of course, I mean, I mean Stephen and, and uh, people at College, they, they certainly know that intellectually. You know, that they, of course, they do. Uh, uh, but I guess it's just the design of the the courses, which is probably limiting um, discourse, and, and in particular public discourse, um, this you know privacy paranoia basically limits uh, what what people um, you know or limits people's involvement because of you know, privacy paranoia, 
which you know, obviously I think is exaggerated. Um, so you know, I would much rather see a, you know, a public course with some you know, public groups sort of you know, interfacing with that uh, or, or interacting with that, uh, with that course. I think that would be a much more productive, much more dynamic. How, how would that manifest itself? What, what's, how, how well, would it work? Uh, well, just, well j j just completely off the top of my head. So, I mean, you, you, mean you could have, you know, say, a course of, of people doing, you know, for instance, in the, a, a body type course, uh, but uh, the participants uh, within that group, and, that, and there may be groups already within doing the course. And so, you know, I, I think I would identify any existing groups that, that were already there and keeping them together temporarily. Uh, and, and, met, and just basically trying to form, you know, groups that already have some sort of organic basis uh, and uh, either filling them out or, or tearing them apart as, as necessary to, to, to sort of even up groups. But, you know, trying to sort of keep uh, uh, organic elements of, of groups already together and then interfacing those groups with, with groups um, that have, have some sort of special interest and which are not all comprised of people doing the course. So, so you know, uh, you know, it's just a matter of you know, trying to sort of identify uh, uh, special areas where people have special interests and, and want to sort of you know, take a discussion in a particular area. And, uh, or, or you have people wanting to do sub courses within the course, um, for example, uh, and, and doing it in, in the context of a, of a group which is not actually part of that course. Basically rotating, rotating around, around people in the course and, and, and bringing them outwards into to other groups that, that, that have uh, um, uh, interests. Is there a, a, a core level of understanding that would be required for everybody who's participating? in order um, for them to be able to communicate. Well, um, yes. I mean, well, this I mean, is, the thing is, if you go on a course, if you, you, know, you go on a course, you of normally, you sort of think, well, I'm going on a course because this course is about something. And that's the about is what I'm interested in. So mm -hmm. whether it's dance or music or theater or something, you, you, well, that's something I'm interested in in the first place. So mm -hmm. I might be coming at it with a, a different background but my I have to have a common interest in order to be interested in the course in the first place well just, just let me give you one you know, you know plausible example um, of you know, how, a, how a, uh, an outer group could could interact with an, with a sort of a, another group uh, um, in, in, a, in a circulating manner uh, I mean in this, I'm doing a little, um, I was probably getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm doing a bit of an experiment with uh, uh, Ellen. Um, I'm sort of wanting to, I'm going to do an interview with her um, to, to ask her a, a few uh, uh, deceptively simple questions. So, which, which, you know, we shall see how that goes. So, you know, I basically got, got this experiment lined up just to sort of, you know, ask her about, you know, now, what is Dharma? You just get to tell me. There's lots of, I've got a few little questions just to sort of, you know, uh, get people to talk. Uh, but anyway, I mean, in the, in the context of, say, um, a group, say, that was sort of saying, you know, let's call it defining Dharma. I don't think I'd ever do one like that, but just, just say it was, you know, this group is about defining Dharma and, and debates about, you know, what is Dharma? And so you might get sort of uh, two or three uh, uh, guests into into that group, um, you know, on a you know daily basis perhaps, and, and you would and you would get them to sort of say, okay, you're you're you're, you're studying secular dharma, what is dharma, and, and get them to talk, try to get them to to, to visualize, to to talk, to try and you know, try and find out what they truly mean personally when they say you know. 
uh, this is Dharma or, or this is not Dharma or whatever. Um, so not, not necessarily trying to guide it, but then also perhaps asking questions of them that might sort of um, get them to think about other possibilities, for example, or get us to think about other possibilities. And so, you know, I, well, I'll see how this experiment Yeah, that sounds interesting. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I can sort of show you what, you know, hopefully, if, you know, if it works out, I think Ellen is the right person for this. I think she has an understanding of you know, pilots, experimental sort of you know, um, you know, things. So, uh, yeah, I hope if that all works out, I'll, I'll sort of just you know, chop it up and uh, edit it uh, and, and just see what sort of results we get from, uh, from those, those sorts of questions. Because that's, I think that's the sort of thing that could engage people very, uh, you know, fairly rigorously. Uh, and and to, to get them to, to really examine themselves and, and, the, and the frameworks that they use to sort of uh, express their dharma. So yeah, that, that's an example of sort of you know, having a, a group that has a focus and circulates people uh, uh, within that. So, right. Yeah, no, no, I understand. That's very interesting. And I'd look forward to seeing the... Yeah. outcome yeah I'll, I'll be lining up the meeting pub oh, what is today oh wednesday of course yes um yeah probably in, uh next day or two i'll probably uh, line up a meeting so yeah we'll see how it goes uh if, if it works out i mean if, if i find that you know you know people are sort of able to sort of express themselves in a way that i think is you know useful um um we should have something up by in a couple of you know, in a week or so. Um, but yeah, depending on how that goes, you know, it could be you know, expanded. Uh, it, it, I'm hoping that it's going to be quite interesting, just to get you know complete news perspectives on on how the people view, you know, in, in a very personal sense, you know, without using sort of you know ten dollar words or or Sanskrit, what they really mean when they say dharma. Elfie, you need to talk. Yeah, come on, Elfie. Uh, but on the other hand, you need to talk with your microphone on. So. I can't hear you. Okay. Oh, it's got a little red thing in the corner. Ah, there you go. Okay. Uh, Is that better? Yep, yep. Okay. Yes. Um, um, well, when my, uh, the, the one thing that, that I hooked on is actually how um, I, I just had a wave of, of uh, real, you know, delight and, and uh, gratitude towards the, the the way that um, uh, the secular Dharma course went in the way of how much time there was for discussion. Not always, you know, and, and even then, there, remember there was a time when we revolted in a way because there, were, there, there seemed to be not enough of it uh, in the silent one. And uh, in, in um, and I saw, how how um how rare how how rare that must be in the in in the world of of mindfulness and that that um and especially if it is coming out of buddhism because the history is absolutely that of the discourse but which is not a discussion there it's a, it's a it's a speech isn't it I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's a typical retreat. Every evening you get your speech and, um, and the number of questions is, is pitiful. And it's um, to, to have that invitation of discussion all the time is, is absolutely exceptional, I think. 
So there is, mm -hmm. that, that, that seems to me uh, a very specific thing about Stephen and uh, how be, that being held in Bodhi College more or less well. Remember the, there was an open day of Bodhi College in London last year, uh, a year before even. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rupert was there. Uh, we went to two different presentations. I went to one that uh, had the two teachers that I didn't know very well yet of Bodhi College. <clears throat> I, I can't even remember their names very well. And they did their, their they, they uh, each gave their presentation and then there was an, uh, there were questions and uh, I, I was kind of really taken aback about how these questions were handled because um, when they were challenging, they were challenging questions just from this one member of the audience. Um, they were dealt with, these questions, they, they were dealt with in a very authentic, or, or, or what can I say? Um, very um, harsh way, I thought. You know that the the orientation was not. Oh, how interesting! One can think like that. You know, um, and uh, but but really, like you got the wrong th way of thinking here. You know, yeah. better shut up. Um, and I thought, wow, that's interesting. Even in Bodhi College, the level of being able to handle uh, que questioning and, and uh, ac actual discussion is really paper thin, seemed to me, just in that moment. There were these two guys and they wouldn't have any of it. And um, I'd, I'd, so I have a, a slight reminder of that, how rare that is in the world we traveled there to be invited to discuss and to be heard uh, and, and, and how, how exceptional that is in the world of mindfulness, which is, which is absolutely still uh, dominated by, by people giving their sermons. Very religious Gurus. actually, isn't it? You mean, it's, it's what I call guruism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it's interesting. It's the, it's even in the in the totally secular mindfulness business, still a bit like that. Not mm -hmm. very open. Yeah. Yeah. John Kabat-Zinn will talk to this evening. I don't know if. Yeah, I saw your your link. I'll see if I can. Yeah. Now there is someone who can hold a sermon. It will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's this thing. That's not that they haven't got anything uh, interesting to say, but it is. It's how they say it. So there it is. Take it or leave it. And that what we were invited to do in in that course is this totally exceptional thing. I think. That actually, you know, there was a round going on with everyone having their say, if they wanted to, and and then the, those group discussions. If you think of it as a course leader, the group discussions where people split up, they are anarchic. You don't know what these people are talking about. You're not there to to hold it or to to uh, safeguard your own stuff. Uh, you know, there's six people going off in one direction and you do not know what they come up with. And that uh, for, for the tradition must be that absolutely, it is not allowed, is it? You, you are meant to be in silence. There's no group discussion. You go, you know, if you go to Gaia house, you know, the group discussion is with one, one teacher and otherwise, you do not talk. There is no interaction. And if you do, if you are caught, when we had that first retreat at Gaia House and people were caught 
talking. <laughs> you know, it was very mm. frowned upon. Oh my goodness! And there was talking going on on the front lawn. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> it was met with hissing, and I don't think we were invited back. So it's <laughs> it is it is um, it is very religious in that way mm -hmm. where where mm -hmm. it comes from isn't it very religious and it, you can see how much <clears throat> Stephen sticks his neck out there because i don't think he was always very um comfortable but he encouraged it anyway i really rate that highly you know it's just mm -hmm. amazing that openness and encouraging other people to think uh, how amazing is that I really rate that. Well, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I, I'm, I would have thought that that would be the basis of any <laughs> course, personally. Yes. I mean, I, I can't think <laughs> how you could run a course unless it's about encouraging people to think. I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, I, so I... No. And Most it, people, I mean, that's, are about people absorbing in the Buddhist world. People absorb, not, not think. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to interrupt. Mm. I did, though. So. I know. Well, yeah, I, know. I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I suppose it's maybe I don't know a, a different starting point because I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I actually thought that there wasn't anything like enough mm. opportunity for discussion. And I wrote to Stephen about it. I just said that this is far too, um, too, too close to structure, and there ought to be. Uh, for me, that was the point: was to have more dialogue, the, the sorts of things that we we talk about, so that there is more opportunity for engagement with other ideas, in order to be able to see what is, if you like, beyond Buddhism. But the only way that you could possibly consider a beyond Buddhism is to be open to other ideas, to encourage people to think. So I just thought it makes absolutely no sense not to do that. You would you would have to do it. So I, I mean, maybe I don't know. It just seems anyway. I don't know. It's just it's, it's a, a different starting point, I suppose. Um. How, is, are there any other uh, groups uh, from the, the course or from the course previous still you know, meeting in, in some form uh, that you know of? Well, certainly the, the, the other the group that Ellen and, um, and Chrissy and and now Glenn is involved in because I, I got a message from Glenn the other day and he said he he joins theirs occasionally because I know his fell apart uh, the one that he was in um, because people just couldn't couldn't make it so there's at least one from the groups I can't remember how many there were with us um, but the, for the previous course I, I don't know the, the only thing I can remember is that Stephen saying that there were some of them that were meeting again and and we was hopefully we'll meet some of them on this course because this course has been offered initially at least to people who have been on those those previous courses. But I I suppose for me one of the an outcome from this next course would be to see if there's something like you are talking about, Gary, that there's some opportunity for taking things to a, a from organizing things on a, in, a, in a different way to a, a sort of Bowley co College course structure so that there is um, opportunities to be more expansive to be more out looking uh, and it just reminded me of something that I mean that Elfie said in a, one of our meetings to, about because I was asking about you know, is 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 the Dharma the core to what we should be thinking about and 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 
it was one of the things, is what you were saying, Alfie. And, and you know, this is one of many. And I think, well, where are, where are the others? Why we should be bringing in others? And there's there's quite a few now publications, and books that I've been reading, which suggest that there are quite a few other ways of looking at the nature of of being and that we should be they should be given as much relevance as dharma as the teaching of the of the buddha and that's why i suppose why i come back to this idea of beyond buddhism because buddhism is has a primacy in the in the title and uh, I'm not sure it deserves that. That's, I think, where I'm... My, my doubt is, I don't know. But... No, I think that the, the entire problem is one of, you know, ways... It's not actually courses, although the courses are really important uh, for, for, for many of us. Uh, but, but, you know, it's... Uh, how, how do you circ- How do you discourse? Because... Yeah. Without discourse, there's really nothing. Yeah. Um, you know that <clears throat> it uh, goes nowhere. And I, and I think also there's also a, you know, a, a much more fundamental question, and and that is you know what is the role of dharma within the the context of uh, human evolution? Um, is is it some sort of uh, you know uh, particular trait that is only sort of exhibited by by a certain number of, of uh, the, the population, for example? Um, uh, you know, is, is it has Dharma actually evolved uh, to, to, to counterbalance uh, uh, other aspects of, 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 you know, of behavior within the species? Uh, so, so not sort of looking so much at Dharma as some sort of universalism, um, but uh, more as sort of a, um, a balance. Well, it, it, yeah. I think it comes back. Did I, did I give it up? I've got up the, the, the subject. Have I no. tried to change the subject? Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, it's just that I think um, it's just the word Dharma again. It's like, you know, you were talking about asking people what they mean by the word Dharma. And I, mm. I, have, I think I, I still have a big not a problem. I mean, I just, I don't know. Dharma well, is, is Dharma rules is Dharma well, well ooh, that's, what, that's what I want to hear that's what I want to hear <laughs> <laughs> I think it probably does. if you want to know whether Dharma is part of human evolution and it evolves then you think you probably have to know what Dharma is and I'm not sure I do I think it's it's a a wisdom it's a form of wisdom uh, a wisdom for the collective and 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 for the individual uh, it's a uh, you know, a middle way, as you, uh, uh, to, to to borrow a phrase, you know, it's it's sort of a, a type of pragmatism, sort of sees situations and see and 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 says, you know, that there's various ways I can respond to this situation. Uh, that there are good ways, there are, there are, there are perhaps better ways. Uh, you know, it's that it's that sort of vision uh, that you know may well not be inherent or innate within all people. Uh, or it may be lesser or or, or or greater in some people, and so I think you know, I, I, I I prefer the use you using or you anybody using the word wisdom. To yeah, dharma. Well, well, that's what that's that's what dharma is. It, it's it's uh, well, it is for you, isn't it? The wisdom. Well, because that, I think it's that... pretty. It's not obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out when you ask Ellen. But yeah, if it's wisdom, then why don't we use the word wisdom? Instead of, I, I think they're interchangeable. I think, uh, well, well ah. I think perhaps dharmic wisdom is that you know a, perhaps a particular type of wisdom. Uh, right. But you know, I, I don't think you can sort of say. But, but it's also a practice of, of wisdom. It's just not the the actual wisdom itself, but it's actually the actually the actual doing of the wisdom. Wisdoming. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they're good. all Dharma. just stories. I think that, that, like mm-hmm. Dharma is is a story of wisdom. Yeah, if there is something is. like like wisdom, 
you know, we can only approach it sideways in that strange oblique way because we cannot, soon as you define something, it falls out of wisdom totally. You know, you cannot get to, to something like wisdom in a, in a full definition. I don't think it's not going to work as it is too ephemer ephemeral. Eph eph ephemeral. Ephemeral. Yeah. Um, so it's it it. So then we have our stories about wisdom, don't we? Like parables, like gospels, and and Buddhism, and all that. And they come with their frameworks and their analogies. And uh, so we can kind of because because that's how we convey things with stories. So how can I tell you uh, that it would be good to be a Christian? Well, I tell you all the story about Jesus and how he did miracles, and then you might just be with me. And so it's that Harari thing, you know, it's, it's that, that's how we communicate what we're on about. And then language has always this, it, 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 we can only communicate it with language and that is limited and has, because it is full of, of uh, hidden, messages uh, so it's always uh, a, a tricky affair uh, but um, they, they get more and more elaborate and, and then in the end all those things collapse in a way because the elaboration is then gets more important than the, the, the kernel of truth in there so dharma is one way of talking around the hot, um, the hot muesli, we say in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we, we kind of, we go around, you know, because we can't really talk about the thing. Uh, we tell a story that, but weren't we there a while ago when we say we can't sing about the thing, but we define its shape by talking around it. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. I yeah. thought yeah. that was, yeah. The yeah. Hole that yeah. Swept, yeah, so that's yeah. right. Yeah, I it's thought that was similar, such a such a such a good thing, you know. So, yeah, so, so we hard, we define the shape by talking what it's not like, almost, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's it, we we go around mm -hmm. its perimeter and say, ah, oh, it's in there, it's in there, mm -hmm. guys, and 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 but we can't talk about it. And Dharma is one such story, and Buddhism is one such story, and Christianity and. And they're, they're, they're the stories around it. Are they the thing? No, I don't think they are the thing because so, as soon as you make them a thing, it gets terribly dogmatic and um, and isn't worth it. Uh, it. It's paper anymore. It's it's just one thing to suppress others with. But how can you know that, that that's how? Well, I like when the Muslims sit down to a bacon meal and wash it down with a beer, because that's the start of doubt, isn't it? <laughs> it's, 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 it's like... the start of uh, tolerance, yeah. <laughs> of, of sort of saying, you know, yeah, I believe that, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's how it must start. Yeah. <laughs> retaining their identity or retaining their, their yes. aesthetic. Um, yes. I think I, I said before yes. that, that I think that religion is about my identity. It's not, I was wrong, I misspoke. It's about an aesthetic. Yeah. Uh, and and people are holding on to an aesthetic, yeah. um, uh, which is you know, an identity is part of that aesthetic. Yeah, mm. you know, and I think that might have been how it happened in the West with religion as well. You know mm. that we we kind of got a bit uh, flexible on the edges, and we're still Christians, and now we're still Christians, and we don't give a damn about. But we you know, we keep the identity and let the rest go. And with that comes a little mm -hmm. bit more openness and tolerance. And then we can have same sex marriages and stuff, you know, little by little. I think that's maybe how it has to happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, but to the cause, I mean, on the one hand, I'm t I, I love that Rupert is our absolute, you know, I, you're the spearhead. You say, not enough discussion. What's that? This is the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because you give it perspective from the, as also the, your academic and art world, I mm. think, which is so precious to me that you, you say, what? 
that you call you you praise that that's the minimum and i'm with you and <laughs> totally totally so you have to give us that perspective don't ever give up on it and then you say after buddhism really and I, I again i i really treasure that perspective you know from the buddhist world you would say to say something like after buddhism is sacrilege what do you mean after buddhism you know if you if you come from a buddhist world it would be like saying after jesus you know that there's nothing after jesus you know although the muslims thought so but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it is it it is um you cannot, you know, that, that, that is real iconoclastic to say something like after Buddhism from where Stephen comes from, I think is, is, is outrageous. But uh, from, from where you come, I can totally see that we got to see it as a problem. Do we really still have to refer to Buddhism, to that story? Or are we, is it time to define a new story around that old shape, you know, that has not, that does not refer itself to Dharma or Buddhism, but that just might come up with something fresh. Well, I think that's really um, a question of terminology. And, you know, I, I won't say it's only a matter of terminology. Unfortunately, words do have power and words do have uh, emotive and, and uh, all sorts of other um, uh, problems within themselves. Uh, so so, so no, no matter what you call something, I mean, whether, whether you call it Dharma, whether you call it wisdom, whether you call it sort of, I don't know, a tomato, um, it doesn't really matter what label you, you slap on it, really. I mean, some, some person somewhere is going to misinterpret it. And we've seen, of course, these sort of li li linguistic gymnastics happening within the, uh, you know, within all religions, in fact, but, but in particular within, the, within, within Buddhism, with, you know, all sorts of uh, uh, you know, uh, disagreement about how, how texts should be viewed, their status, what they actually say, how they're translated, how they're mistranslated, you know, all these, all these, um, which, I mean, I, I think probably on the course, we may, we may have spent about 50% of the time defining what words didn't mean. So, you know, uh, that, that is the problem with language, but nonetheless, that's what we've got. And, and uh, you know, thousands of years of, uh, of, of history have, have not really cured us of that yet. So, you know, we just have to deal with the fact that, you know, uh, the, the, the labeling and the linguistic sort of identification of, of uh, what it is we're talking about may take many forms. <laughs> I love I love how you separate there. I'm happy with with and uh, very comfortable in the presence of both of these things. So, you know, Gary, you, you, had, you don't have much problem with the word Dharma. Why not? That will do. <laughs> and Rupert saying all reference to Buddhism needs to be questioned. <laughs> this isn't good enough. And I say, yeah, cool. <laughs> I hold yeah, both well, of you. <laughs> I, I, well, I can actually do agree with, with, with you know, but, 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 you know, it is body college. You know, their, their roots are Buddhism. And I, and I guess the, the seller course has got to have something to do with their early Buddhism in it. So <laughs> we've got to give them a little bit of, you know, leeway there. But, but it's actually true that, you know, uh, it, it would be nice to leave the word Buddhism, Buddhism and uh, uh, behind, but you know that's not going to be possible. You know, there's lots of good stuff there. We know that. Uh, 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 and but you know, to, to bring on all the baggage of uh, of of the the Buddhist traditions, I mean, that's one hell of a lot of baggage, and it's just too heavy. Yeah. Yeah. 